everyone and uh, good morning. Uh, I hope uh, you forgive me if I just sit down. Yeah, uh, my topic for today is very much new approach for countryside development. Uh, new approach in the sense that this is the fourth time I'm presenting here. In all the three occasions when I presented, uh, we were using or we were advocating a old approach. So beginning of uh, 2019 onwards, we have this new approach. Together with my uh, business partner, Mr. Cool uh, Woodley, who joined as our new technical director uh, last quarter of 2018. So yeah, I have four topics. Uh, first, uh, briefly introduce uh, the company to give you a background on why we came up with uh, a new approach. And of course, the major lessons learned uh, for a decade, 2008 to 2018. Uh, using the uh, old approach we have for countryside development. And uh, what is our framework? New approach which we are using 2019 onwards and the updates in using this uh, new approach. So firstly, uh, Burma is a process engineering company and our market is only in uh, uh, food and beverage and uh, uh, agro-industries. Van uh, already mentioned our mission, vision, our, uh, we, we envisioned our company when we started to be a globally competitive uh, provider of engineering solutions. So not just the Philippines, but uh, globally. So we are guided by our core values, which means excited in creating greater value for all stakeholders. Excited stands for pursuit of excellence, customer focus, doing our business with integrity, and our team work and discipline to create, all together to create greater value for our stakeholders. So just to give you a background on what we have done the last 10 years, uh, we offer products and services to the food and beverage industry and the agro industry. And uh, these are currently plants, processing systems, and uh, services ranging from project development all the way to testing and commissioning. And uh, these are our accomplishments for uh, the last 10 years. These are just the major projects that we have done. Uh, I'd like to uh, highlight that this involved big projects. Uh, for example, the first one is a 500,000 knots per day coconut water concentrate plant in Candelaria, and then followed by uh, uh, 200 and 400 tons per day in San Pablo, 2012, uh, and then expanded in 2016, the same factory. And uh, two factories in Santa Cruz and uh, uh, in Davao del Sur and Queso, all with the same order, each factory can process 500,000 tons per day. And uh, for a complete or a uh, greenfield project, we've done uh, 350 tons per day, uh, also integrated coconut processing plant in uh, General Santos. And uh, back in 2017 and 2018, we uh, turned over 350 tons per day uh, capacity uh, coconut facility in Palawan and the 200 tons per day expandable to 300 tons per day also integrated coconut processing in Cotabato. So not just on, in the Philippines, we also did projects in India and in Vietnam. Also big processing plants. Uh, we are not just in coconut, we also had projects in tropical fruits. Uh, the one in Davao particularly is a flexible uh, factory that can produce a septically processed uh, banana puree, banana puree, uh, banana puree, papaya puree, and pineapple, coconut milk, and coconut water. And uh, lately, the last year, 
also a safety processing line for a major tropical food processing in southern Mindanao. We did, we are also doing right now an installation stage, a big processing plant in Indonesia for coconut water concentrate and for uh, virgin coconut oil. And uh, we have just started uh, in December a new uh, project, which is now on site development stage, which is in uh, the Mau region for tropical fruits processing. So uh, most of this project involves uh, uh, big investors, big processing plants, because our advocacy in the past uh, dealing with uh, big processing. <coughs> And this is how we, uh, we would say we are quite successful in this and uh, made a name in the industry, uh, proving ourselves in the process engineering and as a turnkey uh, contractor. Uh, but after assessment, we made some assessment and uh, listed our major lessons learned. Uh, for 2008 and uh, 2018. Not uh, really rocket science, but uh, simple lessons learned. Which we uh, digested and summarized into three measures, uh, major lessons. Uh, number one, of course, is uh, as opposed to big processing plants, uh, when I was, uh, make, when I made presentations during the past, I've been advocating that the smallest viable processing plant that we should put out is 200,000 tons per day. Uh, below that, the attractiveness to investors uh, is not there anymore. Okay. So now, setting up smaller processing capacities will have more positive impact in countryside development. So that's our new advocacy now. And then, which was mentioned uh, by uh, Rene here, it has to be market driven. So uh, we need to focus on developing and marketing ready to consume, demanded by the market, to enhance the viability of small processing uh, projects. Thirdly, before we focus on optimizing the uh, value chain of a coconut, this time we are focusing on optimizing the coconut farm, the whole coconut farm, not just the coconut tree, to have a better chance to sustain a division of coconut farmers. I learned this from, uh, I just met him once, but he has a big impact, a very simple concept actually from Dr. Season of UPS. Why are you focusing on just coconut tree? With the uh, coconut farm, it's only utilized 10%. So you have 90% unutilized resource. So, uh, <laughs> President, Dr. Cecil, this well known in UPLB, is an international uh, expert and sought after. <laughs> I'll give you the first name. So, uh, yeah. With that background, I'd like to present Burma's new approach to contribute towards countryside development. So it means Burma is not the sole. Everybody is contributing. But when we say we are engaged, we are really engaged in doing it. That's what we have shown in the past 10 years. When we started advocating, uh, maximizing the uh, budget chain of the coconut. So, uh, yeah, I'd like to uh, present our new approach in terms of the framework. So, this framework, through to our mission, we deal with stakeholders. So, the primary stakeholder here is the raw material producer. This is the farmers. And the other important stakeholder, as was mentioned, should be market-driven. What does the local, not just the export market? We are 110 million population. It's a substantial consumer market. 
So what would they really want? And then the MP3. I'll explain later the MP3. It's not about uh, music. So the other stakeholder, of course, would be Burma processes. What is new about this uh, framework is that now we deal with the possibility of farmers themselves or their group owning the MP3, which has a direct link to the market. And we are not just dealing with coconut. A whole lot of farm products that can be grown in between the coconut. And then Burma also is not just limited to project development now and design and build of production plan. We are now into product development as well as market development. Because the main lessons we learned is that we built big plants. There are big plants we built that for the last, for two years they're struggling to, to sell the products. Because it's product-driven, co-production-driven uh, business model. So, yeah. Uh, this is not that a purpose so that you cannot see the uh, <laughs> In my computer, it's very clear. <laughs> so anyway, this uh, my good friend or partner, uh, Paul Woodby is behind the development of this uh, small multi-purpose processing plant or what we call the MP3. And uh, as, apart from being small, it should be flexible enough to uh, process several types of raw materials. So the key to compete with the big players, just like David, flexibility, agility, quickness. Uh, David could not beat uh, Goliath if he's not quick, he's not agile. So this is the uh, key characteristic of the MP3. To make up for its lack of uh, economy of scale. And uh, yeah, these are just framework, these are just flow diagrams, drawings. So I'd like to present the last part of the, uh, this discussion. It's what have we done since we started it in uh, early 2019. First, this is something new for us. Okay. Although we have built big plants, these companies, their investors, they have the money to invest in people to do product development. My good friend Reggie is a specialist in product development. They have people for market development, for sales. Farmers and farmer groups, not that I, I lack uh, confidence in them, but they lack these resources. So uh, what have we done? We showcase and put in our money in a small, it's still an MP3, but the P now stands for a pilot plant, right in the middle of Quezon City. We have a five-ton pilot plant. And this pilot plant, since Calamansi, the London, which grow in between coconut trees, we started with this. And of course, we uh, have learned that most of the uh, Alamasi drinks <coughs> the Dalandan juice in the market doesn't, fresh, doesn't taste fresh at all. We learned that they came from coconut concentrate. So when you drink them, it doesn't have the Alamasi or Dalandan flavor anymore. So yeah, we uh, fresh uh, fruits, put them in the processing line, Battle them in the same day, and the feedback was very positive. And it's not just a product development anymore. We are already testing and selling this uh, uh, 
in Quezon City area and in Cavite area. And the feedlot was very promising. Uh, in fact, we cannot cope with the orders. And we cannot market it heavily. Our FDA has been approved, but still two for signing. <laughs> <laughs> Same story. So, uh, but the feedback from uh, auditors, and we have a lot better uh, facility than those with FDA. We follow all protocols of PASA, GMP. And the auditor already approved it, but due for signing by the signing authority. Maybe uh, Mr. Ordonez can help us. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, the other development or update is that we have already, since this is already uh, been going on for a year, we have been promoting the, this since uh, January 2019. And we have uh, generated a lot of interest already. And we have already proposed this uh, multi uh, MP3 that can process mango, guayabano, pineapple, of course the citrus, uh, of course coconut. All these uh, grow under the, in between the coconut tree. To produce ready to consume drinks. Not just a, a bath or puree that will be used uh, by processors who have their own brand. By producing your own brand, you can sell directly to consumers. Uh, I attended the Coconut Summit in PGA. One of the main complaints was that Philippines is a major coconut producing, yet when you go to the shelves in the US, in, the, uh, in Europe, most of those uh, products are made in Thailand. Yet, um, but if you look at the chart, we are number two largest coconut producing, and in fact, we are the largest exporter of coconut product in the world. Because we are dominated by large processors who are satisfied and more profitable by just selling brand. But of course, we will not forget also producing puree for processors. Because uh, one of the uh, learnings we have is uh, it's difficult to buy. If you are a small processor, it's very it's challenging to buy puree for your, as your raw material. Because they would require minimum order volume one container load. And we have also proposed for uh, the Philippines, there are also areas where we don't have coconut, but there are a lot of baseballs. So we have proposed also to these areas, about uh, five areas, where baseballs and foods are available. But this uh, vegetable can be turned into ready to eat soup, which uh, link, can be linked with the government's uh, nutrition program. And of course, uh, ready to drink uh, vegetable uh, fruit juices, and also puree from fruits and vegetables. Okay, last part. My presentation is that whenever you go all over the country, you will see this. This picture represents the majority of our coconut farm. So much coconut occupying 10% of coconut farms. And uh, if I'm still correct, that's 3 million hectares of coconut farms. So basically we are just using, of course there are, the government has been 
promoting this for a long time already. Intercropping. And I think heavily intercropping of cacao and coffee, but also tropical fruits, vegetables, corn. But Rene here mentioned, what is missing? We will just be continuously supplying raw materials. And farmers already lack the confidence to make their farms productive. The more they produce, the price go down. So where is the incentive? We believe we need to build impetus. The more we build, the more we, it's like a chicken and egg situation. We plant this, prices go up. When Calamansi, which is about, I think, 80% produced in uh, Indoro, during peak season, it goes below about 6 pesos per, per kilo. So the, the, the farmers are at the, they don't want to harvest their calamansi anymore, but they cannot, they are forced to harvest because the soil will become acidic. So they have to sell at a loss. Well, last year when I started promoting this uh, small processing plant and really uh, talking to farmer groups in our plant areas, they call it uh, Polang Bandila areas. They said, why is the price only four for 50 pesos? When we, when we buy uh, uh, cooking oil, it's so expensive. And then I, I asked them, why? What, what kind of cooking oil are you buying? No, we buy palm oil because it's cheap. <laughs> so you answered your question. <laughs> you should buy coconut oil, not uh, palm oil, even if it's expensive. Yeah, or make their own. Yeah, for us, uh, MPP means empowering 3.4 million farmers for countryside Thank you for your attention.